Hey everybody, it's Tom here from toolswithtom.com. Today I'm going to be taking you through my all-time favorite formula on Excel, the VLOOKUP formula or the vertical lookup formula. You might have heard about this formula before. If you haven't, let me give you a really simple explanation of what it does. Essentially, I like to think of it as uh, the phone book, looking up the phone book on steroids. And what I mean by that is it allows me to take uh, a, a criteria that I provide the formula and be able to find that piece of data in another list, be able to pull all the associated details that relate in that same row, and be able to then consolidate everything into one spreadsheet. So that might sound like a little bit of a lengthy explanation, but think of it in the same way that you would look up data in a phone book. So um, let's take a quick example of from the uh, data that I've got here. Uh, if I take this email address in my top row, and I want to be able to see if that email address is in uh, my transaction list, so if that email address has actually created a purchase in the last month, I can see that I can find that person. What the VLOOKUP formula would allow me to do is be able to run this on a, uh, a much larger scale and be able to pull all of the related columns, so things like purchases, the total amount, pull them all into one spreadsheet so that I'm completely across everything that goes on. Now this is, then becomes a formula that you'll find yourself using all the time for things for, uh, for example, for running any kind of marketing analysis, trying to determine things like campaign ROI. You know, you might have sent out a big uh, email and you want to have a look at who of the people who clicked on your email, how many of them went on to purchase. So then you could cross-reference, you know, the people who clicked on your email uh, then run a VLOOKUP on your transaction list to be able to find out of the people who clicked how, how many went on to purchase. Um, it's also got uses like it, it can help you do a lot of admin tasks as well. So it can speed up that whole thing of being able to have to find a username, see if they're in a list, and then be able to pull in the additional pieces of information that you need. I know so many businesses that still do this manually. There are people who literally spend you know four to five hours of their day running through that when you can literally do this in minutes with a VLOOKUP formula. Um, so it's got a range of uses and once you know how to do it, you'll be able to find yourself, you know, really applying it to a range of different scenarios in your own business as well. But what I'm gonna take you through today is a classic scenario of how a VLOOKUP formula would be used so you can understand how it's run and then be able to see if you can have a go at running this yourself. So what I've got here is I've got two sheets I've got one sheet which has a webinar attendees list, as you can see through in here. I've got the first name of the attendee, the last name of the attendee, and their email address. And so this is just some mock data. And what I want to do in this particular example is based on uh, the attendees of my webinar, I want to work out how many of them went on to purchase in the given month. And so to do this, I've also got, uh, let's just say I've got my developers to pull me a list of all of the transactional data um, from the last month. And in this, I've got three fields. I've got the email address, I've got purchases, and I've got total amount. Now, what you could, of course, go through and do is you could go and find every single one of the email addresses that you've got uh, in your webinar attendee list and see if you can find them in your transactional data and then copy and paste each of the individual columns through in here to fill up that list. And, and that might be fine because, I mean, in something like this, you've only got 30, 30 attendees, 30 email addresses to run. So it might take you maybe 30 minutes. It might take you a little bit longer depending on how long it takes you to do the, this type of work. However, when you're running this with a VLOOKUP formula, you can literally do this all in one go. And it's going to save you a lot of time especially as you start to get into bigger data sets where you've got you know, hundreds or thousands of different data points to work with, to be able to consolidate all of that data into one spot. So I'm gonna show you how the VLOOKUP formula runs so you can get your head around it and have a go at doing it yourself. So what I'm gonna see if I can pull, first up is I wanna be able to fill up my column D. I wanna make sure that I can relate of the people who went to my webinar, how many of them made purchases and how many purchases were made in total. So to be able to run and find this data, I'm going to go to D2 cell, and I'm going to insert function. I'm going to find my VLOOKUP function. OK. 
Okay, I've got my function through in here. And so what I want the VLOOKUP function to do is I want to be able to uh, provide it with a lookup value. So what my criteria is going to be and the data that I'm going to run that against and what I'm actually looking to pull. So we're going to go through and fill out all of these individual fields. We've got lookup value, table array, column index number, and the range lookup. And I'm going to take you through what each of them mean as we go along. The first one is our lookup value. So the lookup value is going to be our search criteria. What we're going to put in here simply is going to be the email address that we want to look up. And we're going to put in C2. So it's really important to note with this that this formula is going to run for each of these individual cells. So you're not selecting the entire column, you're just selecting the first cell in there. So it's going to be C2. That's my criteria I'm going to look up. The next thing I need to provide is my table array. So what is it that I'm going to be trying to find the value in C2 in? And what that's going to be, of course, is my monthly transactional list. So I'm going to go over to that month transaction list and I'm going to scroll to the top and I'm going to include all three of my columns through in there because I don't only just want to pull in the email addresses in there, I also want to then be able to get the purchase data and the total amount data there at a later stage. I'm going to press OK on that. That means what we've got so far is we're going to be looking up the value in C2 across the entire data set that we've got in the month transaction list in our sheet. The next thing we need to provide is the column index number. So what that means is it's essentially the number you want the formula to return, um, the number column that you want the formula to return. So let's go and have a look at our monthly transaction list. And as we can see here, that's going to be that was our table array. That's what we're looking up our criteria against. And so what we've got in here, we've got A, B, and C as our columns that are full. Now that means that we've got three columns in total that we're looking to work with um, because obviously A, B, and C relates to one, two, and three. So what we want to then go ahead and pull is uh, the column index number that we're wanting to look up. So we know that in our first column, column A, we have email address. In our second column, column B, we have purchases. And in our third column, column C, we have the total amount that was spent. So I want to be looking up my second column. So in this formula, I'm simply just going to put the number two because we already specified in our criteria, um, sorry, in our table array that we have uh, uh, cells through from A to C that we want to look up which means there's three columns. So of those three, I want it to look up number two, column number two. And the last thing that we're going to put through in here, it asks for a range lookup. So this is if we want an approximate match or an exact match. You will almost always use an exact match. So I recommend simply putting in here false. Okay, that's all through in there. Let's click okay and see how we've gone. Okay, cool. So we can see through in here, that we've managed to pull uh, against this email address, the number four being the number of purchases. So let's just go ahead and check that to make sure that that's correct. So I'm going to copy this email address, go over to my month transaction list, press Control and F or Command and F if you're on a Mac. Go through in here, see if I can find that email address. And there it is there. I've been able to find the email address here for Allegra Fenari. And then it's got the number of purchases there being four. And as I can see from what I've done in my formula, that's the same as well. So the next thing that I've got to do here is very simple. Uh, I want to make sure that that formula runs on all of my cells so that it can use each of the email addresses as the criteria in the data. So th the way of doing that, the simple way is just going to the bottom right corner. You can see that it allows me to then drag the formula. And I'm just going to drag that the whole way down until the email address is stopped. Okay, so you can see now that that's run through the whole formula and it's been able to associate um, from those webinar attendees that we have in our list, uh, how many of those went on to purchase and how many purchases they made. Now you might be asking yourself what the NA that I've got through in here relates to. So the NA is essentially when uh, the VLOOKUP formula was run, you had a criteria that was placed into the formula but it was unable to find that criteria within the array, the data that you provided it within to search. So 
let's just do a quick sanity check and um, I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. So here we have Sheer McCree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up uh, in this list. So I'm going to go to Command F or Control F, depending on what uh, OS you're on. Next thing I'm going to do is hit Find Next, and you can see that it was unable to find this particular email address because it does not exist within this sheet. So these NAs are relating to when there was no purchase made against that email address. So we have a number of those through in here, and they're all marked as an NA. So what I like to do now, we could literally then move on to the next step, but what I do like to do now is always remove my formulas from the spreadsheet, just in case anything changes. Um, sometimes this, the, the formulas can be thrown out if you're you know, manipulating cells adding in new columns. So the best thing to do is we're going to select all of the cells within column D. I'm simply going to go right click. I'm going to then go to where it has this one, two, three, and that's going to paste as values. So what that does is it just simply pastes the values. It removes the formula from each of the cells so that now they're going to be hard values. You can play around with this data as much as you want and these won't change. Okay, so this has now been really effective. We've now got a list of people who have purchased um, based on those who attended our webinar. The last thing that we wanna pull in is our total revenue. So we're gonna run through the same example. I'm gonna run through into E2. I'm gonna go and click on insert function. Again, I wanna use the VLOOKUP function. And what I'm gonna do through in here if we remember, the first thing we need to put in is our lookup value, our criteria. So what that's going to be is C2. And remember that this is going to run across every single one of our cells. So we don't need to put in the whole of the column. It's just going to be the first cell. The next thing is the table array. So what we're looking up this criteria against, that's gonna be our columns A to C of the month transaction list sheet. The next thing is the column index number. So of the array that I've pulled, it's got three columns, one, two, and three. And so I need to specify which column I want to return in this particular function. And for this one, I want column three, which is the column C through in here, which includes the total amount. The last thing that I wanna be doing through in here is putting in my range lookup. And this is always almost always going to be false, which means provide an exact match. Okay, I press okay. And now I'm going to drag that down in the same way again on the bottom right of the cell, take that down. And as you can see through in here, now we've got next to all of our purchases numbers, we've also got a total revenue amount that was spent. So now we're able to see who were the most valuable webinar attendees, what was the average purchase size for each of these as well, um, and who were the ones that didn't go through and make a purchase. So what I'm going to do is a last step with this one again. As we did last time, I'm gonna press Control C, and I'm gonna right click and paste those ones as values. Okay. So there we have it guys, that's got a simple really simple and really effective um, way of being able to pull data from one set and then combine it with data from another area, pull that all then into one place and then be able to manipulate that as I see fit. So what I could do with this now is I could select all of my columns and I could start to run some filters. So I'm gonna go at the top to data, I'm gonna click on filter and then that's gonna allow me to filter based on the values of each of the columns. Let's say I only want to include those who purchased, I could remove all the NAs, and then I could see based on the webinar attendees list that I had, how many people who attended the webinar did a purchase and how many purchases there were and the total revenue. So I can see from here that there were a total of 15 individuals who purchased from the webinar a total of 71 purchases made for a total revenue amount of $3,475. So it was a pretty profitable webinar all up. 
So this is a really good way of then being able to determine whether or not my webinar was run as a success instead of thinking that it was run as a success and not really having any figures to be able to show that conclusively. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I've included as part of this as well a template so you can have a go at this own scenario yourselves and see how you go and running and see if you can get the same results that I did. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at tom at tooleswithtom.com. Thanks guys, see you next time.